Hi, welcome to Ingvid.com. I'm Adam. In today's video, we're going to talk about water, H2O. Okay? Why are we going to talk about water? Well, honestly, water is life. It is the most valuable resource we have, more valuable than oil or gold or anything like that, because this is what keeps us alive. It covers 71% of the Earth's surface and it makes up 60% of our bodies on average. So it's very important that people start thinking about water, start having conversations about water, and start taking water seriously, because if we don't, we're all going to be in very big trouble. So, having said that, let's think of some vocabulary about water. We're going to look at types, we're going to look at water that you actually drink, and then we're going to look at some words that we need to know in terms of managing our water and our water sources. So if we're talking about types of water, we have salt water, which is the most common water in the world, all these seas and oceans. Notice that salt water is one word when we talk about salt water, but when we talk about fresh water, it's two words. Okay, so I don't know why that is, but salt water, one word, fresh water, two words. Fresh water, lakes and rivers, you can just go ahead and drink it straight if it's clean enough. Okay. And then we have well water. Well water is a well is a hole in the ground that people dig. And if you dig deep enough, you'll reach water and then you can pull that water up and, well, maybe not drink it right away, but you can work with it and do stuff with it. We, can, we have spring water. So these are natural springs. It's basically like a, a naturally made well. The water kind of gushes up and comes out on the surface and we can drink it. Mineral water is basically tap water, regular water, that we add minerals to, to make it a little bit more potable, a little bit more healthy to drink. You can have minerals, for example, iron, calcium, zinc, etc. Ozonated water, like this is not as common, but some people like to drink ozonated water, which means they just add extra molecules, I think, of oxygen. If uh, Oh, by the way, H2O, hydrogen, oxygen, the molecules that make up water. Now, Potable water. This is a very important word to know, potable, because potable basically means drinkable. Potable water you can drink. Unpotable means you can't drink it. You can use it to, for example, wash things or to do whatever you can need to do with water, except drink it. So sometimes you'll go to places that have a potable water alert, it means don't drink it, drink only bottled water. Okay, so it's very important to know this word. And then, of course, there's glacier water, which is probably the, the cleanest and tastiest water you can have. A glacier is a huge iceberg the size of cities, right? And they're up in the north and sometimes they flow south. Now, keep in mind that the salt in salt water in the seas and oceans is actually called brine. Okay, brine basically means salt, but it's, it's saturated salt. So you have to take it out, let it dry out, process it into salt. Now. When you go to a restaurant or even at home, there are different types of uh, water you can drink. Still water, this is just regular flat water, no bubbles. If you want bubbles, there are three ways to say it. And if you go to a restaurant, they will ask you, would you like some water? And you say, yes, please. And they'll say, okay, would you like flat, uh, still or carbonated? Or still or sparkling? So basically carbonated means there's carbon in it and it makes the bubbles. And sparkling basically means the bubbles, but sparkling is a little bit fancier, so they can charge you more money, okay? Now, soda. If you go to the US, soda basically means like pop, like Coke or uh, orange soda or whatever. In Canada and other places, soda means soda water. It just basically means carbonated water. Clear, no taste, but bubbles, okay? Filtered water, you can put uh, water through a filter usually like a charcoal filter and it takes out the little particles and makes it a little bit more clean so you can drink it. Tap water. This is what you have at home. You turn on the tap, water comes out the pipe, you drink it, it's fine. Depends where you live. In Canada, you can drink tap water pretty much anywhere. And of course, you can put an ice cube. This is frozen water. You little cube, different shapes, but we call them all ice cubes. So, we know the types, we know what we can drink. More importantly, let's look at how we can manage our water resources. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about some uh, words that you're gonna start hearing more and more about because 
This is part of the climate change, part of the changing world we live in. And these are the things we're going to be discussing, you know, in the next little while. So we're going to talk about, let's start with body of water. So any, basically anything that is full of water, like a sea, a lake, an ocean, a river, a pond, anything that is a, has a substantial amount of water, we call a body of water, right? So that's one thing we need to keep in mind. In the ground, we have to think about aquifer. This is a, a, a Q, a Aquifer. An aquifer is the level underground where there's a rock, but the rock is soft enough that water can basically pass through it, okay? This is what keeps the water in place and eventually it'll come up or we can go down and dig it up. Similarly, the water table is the ground, underneath the ground, the level at which the water is saturated. It means there's enough water that it just sort of sits there under the under the surface and we can dig down and create a well and get water for drinking people. Now again, depends where you're living in the world. Some of this stuff is very important because if your aquifers or water, if your aquifers dry up or if the water tables get lower and lower, it becomes even more and more difficult to find potable water, water that you can drink, right? And this is becoming more and more of an issue in more parts of the world, okay? Now, in Canada, for example, we have something called a reservoir. I mean, there's a, it's in lots of places in the world, but a reservoir is basically, basically like a big tank where we store water to use for our taps. And it just, basically, it just collects rainwater, okay? So it rains, there's a big, basically a big, I guess it's man-made lake, you could call it. It's small, obviously, but it's concrete and it stores all the water. The water get from, goes from there into a treatment facility where it gets cleaned and chemicals are put in to make sure that it's clean. And then it gets pumped out through all the pipes all over the city, etc. Now, the place where the water treatment is and all the pipes and all the pumps, etc., this is called the waterworks. This is the system of transferring the water to the different places. So these have to be kept up in good shape. Now, these days you're hearing a lot about droughts and floods. A drought is a situation where for a very long time there is no rain. It means that everything becomes dry, vegetables dry up, animals don't have anything to eat, everything becomes very dangerous and food prices go up and this is a big problem. This also generally leads to famine. So if a, if an, a region is suffering from a drought for a long time, and eventually all the vegetables die and all the grass and all the plants die, then all the animals die, eventually humans start to die off because they have nothing to eat and nothing to drink, of course. The opposite is a flood where it just rains and rains and rains and rains and there's so much water and the ground can't soak it up, so all the water comes and sits on the surface. Sometimes it covers entire cities. Then we have to think about desalination and desalination plants. So, we spoke about salt water, like in the sea and the ocean. So, we called it, I called it before brine, but another word for the salt is saline, okay? What, we're, what desalination means to take the saline, to take the salt out of the salt water and make the water potable, okay? So, desalination plants do this. They take water in from the ocean or from the sea, depending where they're, uh, they're located, they take the salt out, they treat them, they send them out into the pipes to make a, to let the people in the cities and in the countries drink. These are becoming more and more common as more and more countries need to start taking water from the large bodies of water around them, okay? Again, in Canada, we have lots of lakes, lots of freshwater lakes, and we have lots of reservoirs to collect the rain. It's not really much of an issue. We don't really use desalination plants. But if you think about somewhere in the Middle East, for example, where it's mostly desert and very dry, more and more desalination plants are, are being built to help the people be able to drink. Now, all of this is very serious. We have to take uh, this uh, issue very seriously and make sure that we protect our water resource and start sharing water around the world as much as we can. But I know that it's a little bit too serious, so I also brought you a little bit of a fun aspect to water, okay? I got you a couple of idioms, actually three idioms here. A fish out of water, 
okay? Just because we're talking about water. So a fish, is na its natural habitat is in the water. So if you take it out, what does it do? It just like, you know, flops around. It's very confused. It doesn't know what's going on. It's not in its natural habitat. So we can say this about any person who is not in their normal or comfort comfortable place. Okay, so if you get a new job, but you're not really qualified for it, people will very clearly see it and they'll know that you're a fish out of water. You don't belong here. You're not comfortable. You don't know what's going on. It's confusing for you. And water under the bridge. So if you're standing on a bridge, let's say there's a river and there's a bridge on over it and you're standing on it, the water passes and goes. So when you say water under the bridge means let it go. We had, like me and my friend had a fight and then uh, we stayed away from each other for a few days. We didn't speak. And then we got back together and uh, we said, you know what, forget water under the bridge. Let's move on. Let's get back to being friends. So just let it pass. Let it go away. Now, sometimes you'll hear about the water, like somebody's waterworks are coming in, coming on, right? So turn on the waterworks. Waterworks means tears. So if someone's, is, someone's waterworks are turned on, means they start crying, okay? So kind of fun idioms to know about water. So that's basically it. If you have any questions about this, please go to ingvid.com and ask in the comment section. There's also a quiz. You can under test your knowledge of the vocabulary here that we're using to talk about water. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like this video and come back and we'll have some more good vocabulary lessons for you so we can have the discussion going and make our earth a better place to live. Okay, until then, uh, have a lovely day. See ya.